They're coming here to some departments that are more behind the scenes. So the guys that are very essential to the success of the future of the company. Um, so first we will start here with industrialization. So Danilo will show us a little bit what we do here. Hey Danilo. Hi. So uh, for example, the guys here work all the time with the engineering and make engineering and design change requests. So they figure out if there is some problems with the components uh, to produce them, like if the screws are not right, like if you have two components next, next to each other but they use different screws, so that's uh, better to use the same screws, or like if you cannot really fit in a component into the, into the space that it's foreseen for, and then they do the proposals for the engineers and for the designers to change them. Uh, they also do assembly manuals, like that here, for example, for the powertrain, so the guys in production know how to assemble them. Uh, but basically their main job is to move the company from the small volume production, the prototyping where we are now, into high volume production. So developing the production system, the production process, uh, production lines, the layout of the new factory. Um, and that's basically the big step going from the small volume production where we are now into the high volume production where we want to get. Um, and these guys are working with the engineering to get there, uh, to develop the production methodologies, the machines, how to produce it, the production steps and developing the product itself that it's easier to produce and manufacturable. Next to industrialization here we have our facility team working on a new campus. Uh, health and safety, quality, homologation. And this is our autonomous driving team which develops all our algorithms for our driver coach and other autonomous vehicle projects that we are doing. Here's our team for development of control systems and torque vectoring. That's a very special team, we keep them in the cave. This is hardware and software engineering. That's part of the component engineering. So here we develop, for example, all the electronics in the car. So infotainment systems, this is actually the passenger screen of the concept of the C2. So all the hardware and software is done here, or control units. So this is a vehicle control unit for the C2. There's a bunch of those ECUs in the car doing different uh, jobs. This is, for example, for controlling the powertrain. This is a power distribution system, so distributing the 12 volt uh, power in the car. So basically we don't have a fuse box in the car, everything is solid state, so there is no moving parts, there's no relays, uh, no fuses in the 12 volt system, it's all done um, solid state. Or here, for example, this is a driver board for the inverter, for the silicon carbide switches in the inverter to switch the gates. A um, bunch of smaller ECUs, so here, for example, these are small ECUs that go inside the steering wheel to push the buttons. So instead of, um, instead of having a wire going from every button to the control unit that is outside of the steering wheel, so you have to route a lot of wires, it's an ECU on its own so it just sends the data to the other ECU from what the driver is pressing on the steering wheel. So there's hundreds of these different kinds of ECUs uh, or electronic boards that we all develop here, uh, the hardware and software, and also in two other locations in Croatia where we do this. So we want to do a lot of this internally so that we can control how the car behaves and how the system behaves. And those components are then becoming parts of some other components that we do. For example, the battery management system is a part of the battery pack of a bigger system. Let us now see how we develop powertrain systems. This department develops the powertrain, which means the motor, uh, gearbox and inverter, the mechanical part of the inverter, the electrical part of the inverter is developed in the hardware and software engineering. So this is the new C2 motor. This is the active part. So basically when we develop a motor, we have the active part development, which is basically magnetics. It's the mechanical part, like the housing and the shafts, the rotor and stuff like that. And then we have the thermal part. So we have a simulation team that's developing the thermal characteristics based on the drive cycles and based on the magnetic uh, and material properties. So let us see a few examples. So Lado here. Hey. Hello. Lado is developing the or working on the gearbox of the C2. So that's the two-speed dual gearbox that we have seen downstairs. Very complex, big piece. 
uh, with lots of components. A lot of we don't want to show too much, <laughs> so thanks. Okay. Uh, so let's see how we develop the motors. A very important part of the motor is the active part. It's the most important part. So we can see here how Damir is developing this. So basically we simulate uh, what's going on inside the motor when the inverter is sending the current through the different poles, basically the switching. And then we can see how the magnetic fields from the rotor to the stator and vice versa shift. So maybe you can show. This is a simulation of the uh, torque capabilities of the motor. So we can see the uh, rotor spinning uh, in the preferred direction and we can simulate the torque graphs and all the losses in the motor and so on. So for example, based on this, we know how much losses the motor has. So then the simulation guys on the other side, the CAE guys and CFD guys can simulate how much cooling we need. How do we cool the motor? Um, we get the torque characteristics for the vehicle dynamics guys downstairs to simulate the acceleration of the car. So from the top level requirements of the car, let's say zero to 60 acceleration or zero to 100 acceleration, it boils down to the tire characteristics, to the powertrain characteristics of so motor, power, motor torque, inverter current, gearbox ratio, and thermal capabilities. And then all of this is being tweaked and changed if we want to change some parameters on the car or to achieve certain parameters like acceleration. So everything is very integrated and that's why it's very unique to have everything under the same roof. So these guys can all work together to achieve our targets. Next, we have our software development team for the infotainment system. So let's go there. Thanks, Damir. This is Tomislav, or Logi. Uh, he is uh, in charge of this team that's doing the software for the infotainment, uh, the high-level software, and the uh, connectivity system. So the hardware and the low-level software is being developed in the other department, in the hardware and software development department. This is more the application layer where they make the graphics that our design team is coming up with and make it work. So this team is not only working for our own cars, but we apply these systems also for other OEMs. Other car companies use our infotainment as well. But we can show some older projects, here, older projects uh, to show how it looks like. So maybe you can show a little bit what we are doing here, Tomislav. So for example, here we have an example of a few infotainments from our vehicles. Here we have our uh, infotainment from the Concept1 vehicle. It shows around 400 parameters from the performance of the vehicle, detailed stats of the battery, all the thermal and the cooling systems. Also, it has a real-time navigation system, which allows us to show 3D images of the surrounding area. We can search stuff, basically everything you would expect from a modern navigation system. Also, it allows us to fully customize our car. You can adjust things like distribution of power, distribution of brakes. So we really made this quite a geeky car. You can control everything and you can customize it exactly the way you want. Obviously, this is not the real screens from the Concept1, uh, but that doesn't really matter. The hardware and the software is the same. And what we worked on a lot from the first cars to now is to improve the performance of the system, to optimize the software and to increase the performance of the hardware. So it's a very fluid system now. You can quickly shift between different uh, modes and different views and everything is going very, very fast without any delay. That's what the customers are used to with the phones that are incredibly fast now. So they expect the same thing in cars. And unfortunately, cars are not always up to the task. So we wanted to be up to the task with our system. So we have spent a lot of time to, to get it where it is now. And what's good with our system is when we develop something, uh, for somebody else, you can't really see that it's based on our system. This is our battery lab, where we test the cells. So basically we characterize all different kinds of cells for their electrical and chemical prop properties. So what we try to do here is to run the cells in different environments, in different temperatures, different charge and discharge rates, and model the chemical properties of the cells or electrochemical properties in a mathematical way. So after cycling the cells at different temperatures and different rates, you get a model that you can use to develop battery packs and modules and simulate the performance of the cell based on the uh, 
car and the application of what you want to do with that cell in the car. So this is very important to get the inputs to develop battery packs. So we start with the cell, we model the cell, and then we start to develop the modules and the packs. We are here in our battery engineering department where we have basically our craziest crowd. You cannot see it really here, but after work they go wild. And it's led by Damir, if you can come here. So, Hi. hey, Damir is in the company for what, like four, four years? And a half, something like that. So among the first 30 people, right? Yeah, 50. 50, okay, yeah. okay. So uh, we have here about, uh, how many people do you have in the department now? 40 engineers, uh, mixed electrical and uh, mechanical and one chemical engineer, uh, together with uh, uh, simulation guys, so 50 engineers in overall, yeah. Yeah, so these guys here, these 50 people are developing batteries only from the mechanical side, so the electrical guys are developing on the other side of the building, the BMS and those kind of things. So we have a bunch of projects going on, obviously the C2 development, but also the battery for many other car companies, for Aston Martin, Koenigsegg, but also others that are not public at the moment. This is our simulation team in the battery systems engineering team. So uh, Danny is one of these guys here uh, working on simulations. So we simulate here the mechanical properties of the batteries, for example, for crash simulations that we get the right crash behavior, but also the thermal properties and, and the performance of the battery. So based on the testing of the cell and getting the mathematical model and the drive cycle of the particular project, we then simulate how the batteries heat up and simulate different kinds of cooling uh, methodologies to cool the battery module and to cool the battery pack to have a uniform uh, cell temperature and a uniform module temperature and uniform pack temperature and keeping within the temperature limits um, for the given application. For example, for a Nürburgring lab, so it's very difficult to achieve that. As you know, some electric cars have great performance for a short period of time for one or two accelerations, but on a racetrack they fast go out of breath. So that's one of the challenges to keep the battery cool over long periods of time. That's what we are doing here, doing many iterations with different methodologies, with non-conductive liquids, with water glycol cooling, with refrigerant gas, direct cooling, indirect cooling, depending on the project. So uh, these guys are doing quite interesting things, but we don't want to show too much, so <laughs> thanks guys. That was our battery development and engineering. Now we are going to our data center. Here's our data center. Right next to it we built a one megawatt transformer station, which we had to build because of the battery testing and all the machines that we are using here for the electricity. We didn't have any more space in our main facility for the data center, so we had to build a container outside. So let's see how that looks like. We have a fleet of cars that we use for autonomous driving development for our features, for the driving coach primarily. And those cars generate an immense amount of data. Currently here we have three petabytes of data storage on eight nodes, but we are expanding that now to 15 petabytes, which is a huge amount of data. And to process all of this data, we have uh, NVIDIA DGX1 supercomputer. The DGX is a very powerful supercomputer. We currently have one of them, but we'll fill up the whole rack to accelerate the machine learning algorithms. Uh, it has eight NVIDIA V100 Tesla GPUs and 960 teraflops per second. So let's go on and see other things. This is our warehouse. Here, parts start their life in different forms. For example, here in rods, like copper rods or steel, aluminum, or blocks of material, they can start as really big blocks and then we cut them down to smaller blocks, like this, for example. So this will become some kind of part for a battery or for a car. Um, it can be aluminum or steel or plastic or carbon fiber, but of course also parts that come from our suppliers, like airbags or tires or stuff like that. Um, and from this, like block, this can become part of a Aston Martin battery, of a C2 battery, of a Pininfarina Battista, or something we do for another car manufacturer. 
We have also other warehouses in our other locations, in the new location where we are moving our production. Uh, let me show you also part of this building is grape. So let's see how that looks like. So the grape guys have a good taste in bikes, seems like. This is the brand new Grape G6. We are here in Grape's showroom, being now refurbished, so it's a little bit of a mess. Grape is a completely separate company with its own production and own R&D, so let's have a look at that. Grape has 36 engineers. This is mainly the development of Grape here. So the whole bike, the mechanical part, the electrical, the battery, all the electronics, it's developed here. And right downstairs, they are building the bikes. So let's have a look at that. Here we are welding the frames of the old model of the G12. So this is our old model, the Grape G12, which is a crazy fast bike. Uh, it's a chrome molly space frame or a tube frame, uh, basically similar to the Concept 1. The new bike, the G6, is a carbon fiber frame, so more similar to the C2. And both of those bikes are being assembled here and lots of these parts being made for those bikes here, right here in the assembly. The company is changing immensely. Right now we are moving a large part of our production to another location where we are setting up our first production lines and moving from small volume and prototype production to our first larger series projects where we will have production lines and automation to be able to serve higher volume projects. At the same time we are designing our campus which we want to build in the next two years which will be something very very special and then we want to move everything that we are doing to a central location and not be scattered around like we are today. One thing is for sure. In one year, it will again be completely different. <laughs>